In this video, we're going to take a look at Booleans and some control statements that Ruby has. So the first thing I want to take a look at is some Boolean operators. And what a Boolean operator does, it essentially returns a true or false value. And to understand what Ruby thinks of as true or false, the easiest thing to remember is that anything that isn't a nil, N-I-L, or expand expressedly the constant false, lowercase f-a-l-s-e, is true. So anything else is true. Now there's some languages such as C where zero is interpreted as a false value. And that's not the case here, so don't fall into the trap of that. You're best off using true and false, the constants true and false, and keeping it simple there. And Using those simple constants will really keep you out of trouble. So to give you a couple of examples here, let me launch IRB. And IRB is an interpreted Ruby. And we can play around a little bit with Ruby from the command line, essentially. So I'm going to first do an assignment with number equals 1. So it goes back. It says I got that number is 1. I can ask it, what is number? And it's going to tell me 1. And then let's look at the equal operator. Now you notice that to test for equality it's two equal signs. It's not just one. I used one right here and that's an assignment operator. Two is how you get equals. So then let's put a three. Well we know that's not true so it should return false and sure enough it returns false. Let me go ahead and put a one in here and if you're curious I'm using my up and down arrow keys which allows you to hit your or access your command history. So I'm going to put one in here now and it should return true. So there we go. We're successful in testing that one. So that's testing for equality, the double equal. Now if I want to use, if it's not equal, it's the exclamation mark and then an equal sign. Or some people say bang and then the equal sign. And that's going to be false. Let's change this to three. This should return true because number is not equal to three. There we go. We also have the greater than. So we can say, is it greater than 3? Nope. Or 33, I guess I put. Is it less than 3 or 4? 3, I guess. Doesn't matter. That should be true. We can test that if it's greater than 0. Sure. Now, there's an interesting little character. Well, Boolean operator, I guess you'd call it. Where you can do the gr less than sign, equal sign, and greater than sign. And what it's going to give you is a value of negative 1, 0, or 1. And that negative 1, 0, 1 tells you whether your your test there, a negative 1, the test is the first item, in our case number here, is less than whatever this object is. If I put in a 1, it'll return 0 because they're equal. And if I put in a 0, it's going to say a 1 because it's greater than. So it's just a neat little Boolean test operator that gives you some set little values there. You also have, going along with the less than or equal to 1, still true. How about greater than or equal to 1? True. How about 0? True. 3. So you have a less than or equal to and a greater than or equal to. And the way to remember that is exactly how it happens in English, where you say less than or equal or greater than to equal. And that'll help you remember how those orders of those two characters go there. Now, if I wanted to put in, let's say, number equals nil, it's going to be false. Number does not equal nil should be true. So nil is another one of those types of constants. And you can actually use false if we want. It doesn't make a lot of sense in this case, and it doesn't equal false. But it doesn't equal true either. So those are constants with a value. Now if I go ahead and assign it nil, and now I test for nil here, it's going to be, that's going to be false. I'll test for equality, and it's going to be true. So notice here I signed it, with a single equal sign, and here I went ahead and tested that equality. Now, I'm just going to briefly introduce in this video, and then in another video, I'll go a little bit more in depth in these, the couple of control statements here. The first one is the if statement, and you might have heard it called the if then else statement, and you just have some simple keywords of if, else, 
and and. We have an unless statement, and the way to read this is kind of a little bit backwards, but essentially it's a reverse of an if. So you would put at put string unless number is greater than one. And then you'd put this string. So that's kind of how that one works. And then finally we have a case when type of control structure where we have case this number, case number, when that number, whatever matches here, and we'll play around with this in other videos, it's going to actually go ahead and run whatever statement when it hits this and then exit out. So this is just a quick overview of where you'd use these Boolean tests, because if you noticed, here's a Boolean test, here's a Boolean test, and this is essentially a type of Boolean test where you're comparing these two things, and if this is a true comparison, whatever the comparison is true, this statement will get executed.